Hi, Tristan. Uh, multiculturalism, yes, uh, the Canadian variant. Well, don't get me wrong. I have to admit, I like multiculturalism, and uh, this was really brought home to me one time when uh, I was living in downtown Toronto, and I mean really downtown, Queen and Spadina, Chinatown. Um, and uh, due to a personal life that got completely out of control, <laughs> I uh, decided to hop it, and I moved to New Brunswick. I went directly from multiculturalism central, although one could almost call it monocultural Chinese in that part of the town, um, to uh, another monocultural center, center, center <laughs> uh, which is uh, New Brunswick, where it's one of the last holdouts as a province that's overwhelmingly white. Actually, there's a few of them in eastern Canada, but uh, that, that too will eventually change, if you ask me. And I found that, after a while, it started to actually be something I didn't like, um, living among people that I am part of. I was born in New Brunswick. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I guess I have a visceral sort of love of multiculturalism. I want to live in a multi-ethnic society. Um, that's so why I like to travel all over the place. But one of the aspects of this multiculturalism thing that I would like to delve into is its implications worldwide. I'm sort of, um, as I say, I'm biased in terms of Canadian multiculturalism because it's just a personal preference of mine. Uh, but um, I think that the world is becoming, whether we want it or not, um, McLuhan's global village. It's uh, there's just no way to stop this from happening. Um, uh, there's uh, the the forces at work overwhelm the imagination, and they certainly dwarf humanity's capacity to engineer the process. Uh, the simple fact is that um, the rich part of the world has lots of money, lots of opportunities, and an aging population, and the poor part of the world um, has none of the above. <laughs> and, uh, well, we all know what economics will say about that. We, even if culture and race and everything weren't even involved, in fact, one could say that those issues are sort of byproducts or subsidiaries of the larger issue, which is pure economics, which is a force that I don't think any individual country or even human society has the capacity to engineer, let alone prevent. Um, so in a sense, I would just speak to people that are opposed to multicultural multiculturalism or anything sort of resembling that sort of thing, um, and tell them that, look, <laughs> it's all very well to say that you don't want it to happen, but it's raining outside my window. I don't want it to be raining, <laughs> but it's, it's raining. <laughs> um, Multiculturalism is coming, or something resembling it is coming. Um, it's nothing that we haven't done before uh, as a species. There's been plenty of multi-ethnic entities in the planet, um, uh, to the point where one could say that originally uh, the whole idea of a state had nothing to do with eth ethnicity and everything to do with power structures. Um, that's another story. But uh, I'm sort of looking at the scale of the problem. Again, I've seen things like the border crossing between Singapore and Malaysia, or um, Hong Kong airport, or uh, uh, just places, touch points where you see uh, economic sort of zones, where you see the how just how incredibly um, fluid human movement has become, and I just think that this sort of backlash against it is a backlash against the inevitable. Uh, the world is shrinking. We can like it or lump it. If people want to lump it, that's entirely up to them. But uh, I, I think that it's pretty crazy. Uh, my, my sympathies go out to people like that, people whose worldview depends upon living in a country surrounded by people that are you have a great deal in common with. Um, those people, I guess, are in a bit of trouble, but that's 
unfortunately, the way the world is, things aren't always the way we want them to be. Um, so that's my take on, on multiculturalism. I think that it's inevitable, and luckily, I just happen to like it. Thanks for your response.